Okay, so let me just clear everything up. Um, let me just close what I need to close. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so your client today is an owner of a chain of dollar stores across the United States. Although business has boomed as a result of the recession and customers have shifted away from big box retailers to cheaper alternatives, the firm has found that profit growth has not done as well as revenue growth. Since revenue growth has started to slow, improving profitability has become a key priority for the client, and they've hired us to investigate this issue. Okay. Great, thank you. So just to be clear, um, our, our client is a owner of a dollar store chain, and they are hoping to uh, increase revenue and increase profit growth. So by increasing revenue, they is that their main goal to increase their revenue? Yeah. So basically what they found is that their profit growth has not done as well as their revenue growth. So they they really want to improve their profitability. Okay. Improve mm -hmm. profitability. Great. Thank you. Um, great. So do you mind if I ask some clarifying questions? No, not at all. Okay. Um. First, how are they? Um. How are they measuring the the improve of profitability, and and over what time frame are they hoping to achieve that? Yeah. Um. So currently, there is no specific time frame or any sort of uh, measurable area of what that looks like. But what I can share with you is that, um, basically, I have some six points that I can share. So overall, retail sales growth has been zero point five percent. In the United States. And for discount stores, the growth has been 4%. Our client has seen a growth of 5.5% over the past five years. Historically, the main customer group for discounted stores were poor households. However, over the past four years, the major source of growth for this category is lower middle class households who are shifting their purchasing towards cheaper alternatives. Although revenue growth, um, revenue for our client has grown 5.5%, the profit only grew 1%. Compared to the uh, compared to 3% of the discount store subsection overall, our client is directly competing with three other major dollar stores uh, across the United States, and it is sm the smallest of the four companies by revenue and by number of stores, and it indirectly competes with large stores like Walmart. Now, our uh, client does follow a strategy that all the products are $1 um, across most of the products. And they use this broader strategy of low price strategy, which allows them to have products between $1 to $5. So they can provide a variety of products for their customers. The largest cost our client has is their cost of goods sold which represents 80% of the sales on average, and it does differ based on product. So some products have higher costs than others. The top five SKUs make up 80% of the firm's revenue and effectively all of its profits once the overhead is allocated by product line. Okay, so the top, so five, the, mm -hmm. the top five SKUs make up for how much of the overall? 80% of the firm's revenues and all of its profit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the retail's the retail um market growth in the past mm -hmm. year has been zero point five percent. Just to clarify, yeah, in the United States, and for like uh, discount stores, year. yeah. Oh, okay, and discounts four percent, profit grew three. Okay, mm -hmm. the, client, the client revenue has grown five point five percent, but the profit has only grown one percent. Mm -hmm. The main clients, uh, the our clients' main customers are poor households in the past years, but in the past four years it has been the low middle class that started to purchase from the dollar store market. Yeah. We are facing three other dollar store competitors. We, are we one of three or are there three other? We're one of four. One of four, I see. So there yeah. are three other dollar stores in the US and we're the smallest by revenue of the four? Yes, and by number of stores. And by number of stores. Mm -hmm. 
as, as well we um, compete with Walmart. All products are one to, one to five dollars and our largest cost. So all of our products are one dollar or one to five dollars? The range is one to five. Um, to that's five. really the case because that allows our client to have more products to offer the customers. Um, and then in terms of the cost, um, the cost varies by product as well. So some products cost more than others. Absolutely. Okay. Um, absolutely. So in our top five SKUs are 80%. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And just to clarify, our overall objective for our client is to increase profitability, right? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Um, do you mind if I have a moment to structure my thoughts and then we could go over my approach together? Go ahead. Thank you. Oh, could you time me, by the way? Check the time. Yeah. Great. So love Preet. So here's my structure for how I would approach this case. Uh, okay. Can you see my document? Yes, I can. Great. So overall, our goal for our client if for a change of dollar source is to increase profitability. And the way I want to go about this is first looking at, we're looking at different aspects of the company. First it's sales, like where we're getting our revenue, our costs of our company to run our dollar stores and the over overall market of this industry, the dollar store industry. Mm -hmm. Under sales and revenue, I would look to I would like to look at what products are we currently selling, as in what products are first selling best, what's mm -hmm. our price point for our um for our products and if how we'll compare to um and how our customers are um, purchasing at different price points. I would like to also look at the class of goods we have. Maybe we have uh, more consumer goods or maybe we have uh, just different products. I just like to know what products we sell. And as well for our sales, I wonder if there are new products that we don't sell currently that may be uh, interesting for us to look into to increase our revenue. For yeah. our costs, I'd like to look at fixed costs and variable costs. Under mm -hmm. fixed costs, I would like to look at the salaries of the employees and running the stores and mm -hmm. how many employees we, we, um, we employ. 
And with our variable mm -hmm. costs, I'd like to look at what, uh, what's the cost of opening a new store or what if we were to introduce a new product, how our distribution channels are broken down. In the market, mm -hmm. I would like to look at our customers and just break down the demographics. And I would also look at the competitors and their their um their distribution of goods and also where they what their business strategies are that may differ from ours. And finally, I'd like to look at locations and where we are most competitive in our locations as opposed to competitor, like possibly regionally. So my idea is that where we can best improve our our revenue is the first thought is what products are currently selling the best. Uh, particularly, I'd like to look at those five SKUs that pr account for 80% of our revenue. Do you have any okay. information on that? Yes, I do. So I actually have an exhibit. Let me try to share my screen with you. Um, let me see. Let me, give me a second because I'm just going to need to cover something here. Absolutely. Uh, Oh my goodness. Okay. Are you able to see my screen now? Do you see an exhibit? Um, could you zoom out a little bit? I'm seeing yeah. some of the cut off. I'm gonna zoom out, but it's hard for me to cover all of it. Um oh, there we go. See, I, there we go. That's great. That's great. Okay. Okay, so um, here's Thank the exhibit. Yeah. So in this exhibit, uh, I see case one, the $2 store analysis. Uh, mm -hmm. In this exhibit, we have, oh, I see the calculations. I see the calculations. Mm -hmm. I, I see the calculate. I, I don't think I'm supposed to see the calculations. Yeah, I know. That's it's. Let me just go like here. Uh, yeah. And then yeah. you're not supposed to see total profits. Okay. I don't know. I got, I got it. I got it covered. I got it covered. Cool. Okay. I got it covered. okay. okay. I, I only see it. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I still see the calculations. I still see the mm -hmm. calculations. Um, which exhibit am I supposed to see? So you're supposed to see only like, don't see total profit and the calculation at the top, but I don't know how to cover it because they don't show us just the exhibit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, can you, is scrolling up the prompt? It, it right above it is the prompt. Yeah, let me try to. If I zoom in, can I? Well, I see the I see the red numbers. I see the red numbers. Is that okay? Yeah, I think that's supposed to be there. Okay. okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, okay, excuse me. Um, so in this exhibit, I see the the three different product lines: product A, product B, C, D, and E, and I see. For each of the products, the unit sales, the revenue per unit, the cost per unit, the profit per unit, and the net profits. Yeah. And I see the total profits for all five product lines is 20, 20,500,000 and 500,000. Yeah. And so that would be total profit. Yeah. Um, and so what I'd first like to do is our goal is to increase the profitability of our of our market. And I see that the net profits for product A, C, D, and E are all positive in the in the millions. However, product B is net profits. Um, we we lose 10 cents per unit that we sell. And so our net profits are negative uh 22.5 million. And so the first thing I'd like to figure out uh, as a first insight would be why is um, product B resulting in a net less net loss in mm -hmm. net profits product e um i would also like to look at we see the unit sales for a b c d a b c d e and i'm looking at the revenue per unit is one dollar for each of the products and mm -hmm. the cost per units are lower for the lowest are for product d um yeah. and as well the profit per unit However, the profit per unit is also highest for product D. And so what I'm also thinking is that what is what about product D is so special? And if 
there is a way for us, if that is our greatest profit per unit, maybe we can use profit D and we can focus our efforts on, um, on selling more of that product since we get the most profit per unit from that product. Okay. The highest profit per unit. And finally, I just want to see if there's anything else. It looks like product A. Yeah, so I, I think those are the two approaches that I'd like to look at. So why is product B, why are the why are they so low? Why is there a net profit loss? And for product D, what is causing it to be such a high um high uh profit per unit margin? Okay. So would so you have now, information on that? The yeah. B and D? Uh, yes, I do. So um, I actually had a follow-up question here. So the client really wants us to explore other pricing strategies. The first strategy is moving away from pricing everything at $1, because that's currently the strategy they're following. Um, and instead of having a variety of prices to reflect the cost, uh, as you just saw that everything is $1. Um, so what would happen if we change the prices to you know, also account for the variable cost that you just noticed, the cost per unit. So under this strategy, the prices for product, uh, for A, B, and E will rise to $1.50. And the price of product D will be lowered to 50 cents. With that being said, the unit sales of a are expected to fall 25% as a result of us increasing the prices. Product B, the unit sales will fall by 20%. And product E, the unit sales will fall by 10%. And product D is expected to increase by 50%. So if you like, I could go back to the previous exhibit so then you can calculate what the profit will be if we adopt this new strategy. Absolutely. And so just to clarify, so the prices of A, B, and E will rise to $150, yeah. $150 and price D will be lowered to $0.50. Cents. Yes. The, the unit sales of A will fall 20%. Mm -hmm. B will also... Sorry? Yeah. So per product A will fall by 25%. 25. Yeah. Right. For product B, it will fall by 20%. Great. And probably and, 10 percent. Yes, perfect. And then D is expected to rise by 50 percent. 50 percent. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, could I possibly go back to the exhibit, please? Yes. And so our goal is to calculate the increase in profit. Yes. So what would the new total profit be given the information I just shared? Absolutely. So I know that. Total profit currently is 20.5 million. Okay. Let's see. So product A, B, and E will be increasing their revenue per unit to $1.50. Yeah. And product D will, oh yes, and the product, the price of product D will be lowered to 50 cents. Okay. And so the cost per units will stay the same. And so that means that those will stay the same, but the profit per units will be, of course, changing because the revenue per units will be different. Yeah. So I would like to calculate total profit, um, total profit to be, or let me, let me, instead of calculating total profit, let's calculate change in profit, okay. change in profit. I think those will both get us to the answer. Yeah. So to change in profit, I know that product A will be changing um will be changing from one dollar it will be it will be costing 150 so yeah. that means though the unit sales but the unit sales will fall so that means the profit that means the profit will increase okay let me see okay well first first let me let me work at this one step at a time. So I want to first look at the profit per unit changes as we change the revenue as, as we change the revenue per unit. So for yeah. product A, so for product A, since we're increasing to 150 and the cost stays the same, so that means uh per per unit, per unit, 
our profit is 20 is um 150 minus the cost per unit which is 80 cents and so we will have a total net profit profit per unit we have a profit per unit of 70 cents mm -hmm. i want to do the same for b and for e and for d so mm -hmm. b will be per unit it'll be 150 minus 110 so that'll be 40 cents for e that'll be 150 minus 90 cents so that will be that'll be 60 cents and for d we're lowering it from one dollar to 50 to 50 cents and so our cost per unit will be 30 cents mm -hmm. and so I also want to calculate currently, currently how much how much volume is our are we selling of each product? And so by, I'm going to do that by we know our net profits and we know what was originally the profit per unit. And so by dividing net profits by the profit per unit, um, I'm going to be able to calculate the number the volume of units sold. So for okay. A, we have eight eight million eight million net profit divided by the 20 cents per unit, uh, profit per unit. And so I'm gonna multiply that, multiply that by five. And so what I'm gonna get is we have 50 million units sold of profit A uh, with the original prices. I'm gonna do the same for B and I'm gonna do the same for E and the same for D. And so B, we have a negative 2.5 million divided by the minus 10. And so with dividing by both, we're going to get that we're, we're going to get that we are selling we're going to get that we're selling 25 million units again with product d we have 80 million 8, 8 million excuse me divided by the 0.8 volume per unit and so i'm going to divide that by 10 and then divide i'm going to divide that by i'm going to divide by 10 and then multiply by 8 is that correct? Yes. Yes, I'm divided by 10. So we have 800,000 times eight. So we have sold 64 million units. I'm checking if that makes sense. So if our profit per unit is increased, no, that doesn't make sense. It will be six, it will be 6.4 million units. 6.4 million units. Um, and then profit for D, originally what we have is with the original price, the profit per unit, oh, excuse me. This, I calculated just now the profit for D uh, is 6.4 million units. And then for, for product E, we have we have 10 cents per profit unit with net profits. That means we sold 10 million units. Now let's see. So we know that the unit sales for A have fallen 25%. So 25% of 40 million is 10 million. And so the unit sales with the new price will be 30 million units. Yeah. For profit, for product B, uh, we have the sales fall again by 20%. And so, oh, we'll fall 20%. So 20% of 25 million is 5 million. And so we sold 20 million of B with uh, the new price. With product D, our, our, our sales increased 50%. And so... Divide by two times, divide by two and then add them together, that will be 6.4 divided by two is 3.2. So 6.4 plus 3.2 is 9.6 million units. And for E, we have 10 million and it'll fall 10%. So that's 9 million. Million of E. And so now that I have the, the new profits per unit and I have the new number of units sold, I'm going to multiply the the per, the profit per unit, the new profit per unit with the new price times the new volume of each product sold, and then add them together, including profit C, which um which price did not change. So, zero point seven of product A times thirty million units. I'm going to divide by ten, so three million units, three million times seven. So we made twenty one million. Twenty one million. Is that correct? Mm, 2.1 million no hold on so we're going to divide by divide by 100 hold on mm. no we're going to divide by 10 you were right with the 21 million at first yeah oh, thank you mm. 21 million dollars uh for net profit a plus mm. we're going to go with we have we have 20 million of b times 0. 0.4 so i'm going to divide by 10 again 
and then times eight times four. So that's eight million profit for B. For 9.6 million of D, and we make 0.3, uh, we make 0.3 profit per unit. So I'm gonna divide that by that divide that by 10 and multiply three. I think I'm gonna make a little bit of a rounding assumption and just say 10 million units to make the, the calculation a little bit easier. And so I'm gonna take 10 million uh, units sold for D and take 0.3 of that. And so now we have 3 million of profit for D. 3 million. And for finally for E, we have 0 0.6, uh, 0.6 profit per unit times 9 million. So I'm gonna divide that by 10, again, multiply to six. So 0 0.9 times six is 5.4 million. Mm -hmm. And we're also gonna add the original for product C, which did not change because the price didn't change. So that's 6 million. Mm -hmm. So my the total change in profit with these changes in the price for each, for A, B, E, and D, as well as the changes of the unit sales for the same products will be 21 plus eight millions, of course, 28, 29, plus three, 32, plus 5.4, is that right? Yeah, plus 5.4, how did I get that? Yes, that's right, 5. Mm -hmm. Let me check my math really quick. So 21 is for, 21 million is our profit for A with the new price. 8 million is the profit for B with the new price. Profit D will be 10 with a 3 million. So that's the 3 million, that's correct. And profit E is 9 million, oh, times the 0.3, oh, times the 0.6. And so that means that divide by, yep, it's the 5.4 million, and then plus the 6 million, absolutely. So we're going to add them together. So 21 plus A is 29, plus 3 is 32, plus 6 is 38, and then plus the 5.4 is 43, 38 plus 5.4 is 43.4 million dollars in total profit for with the new change in price is that right 43.4 million yeah so over here i have 44 uh oh. and 900 i'm not sure where the math varies but um, i think it might be product d product d yeah it looks like product d is the issue mm -hmm. 3.3 mm -hmm. d is 0.3 divide 66.4 Bye bye. So E is E is five point four. Perfect. And then D is yeah, D is the one that's incorrect. Okay. So let me check my calculation. So D is six point four million units sold. And we're going to have a decrease in if we're gonna have an increase of yeah. product D by fifty percent. And so that's added three point two. So that is ten million uh units of D sold. And we're lowering the price to 50 cents. Yes. And so we're making 30 cents per unit sold of product D. And so that's 30 cents. And we're selling 10 million of D. Hmm. So am I am I getting the number? Getting the number? Could I see the other? Um, could I see the original? Um, yeah, there we go. So product D is, let me see, product D is. 80 million, 50 cents, 0.5, it's 50 cents minus the cost per unit. And so the new profit per unit will be 30 cents. So I have that here. So that's the profit for 30 cents, the 6.4. That's eight times eight is 64. I'm just trying to look back on my math. So 6.4 million units, that's yeah. the number of units sold of product D, that makes sense. And yeah. so we have, and we're increasing, the, the 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 unit sales for product D increases 50%, right? So 50% of the 10 million you have here is 5 million, right? And so then it, it would, the, new, the new unit sales would be 15 million. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, let me let me do that calculation. So 15 million, 15 million times the 0.3. So that's 4.5 4 million for product D. And so yeah. then I'm going to add, so it's 44.9 million. Yep. Okay. All right, great. The net profit for the change in the price are 44.9 million. Perfect. Yeah. So now, now that you have that value, 
the other idea the client had was to cut the least profitable products out of the product mix with the hope that customers would shift their spending towards more profitable units. Under the strategy, product B and E will be eliminated. So that would lead to a 50% increase in sales of product A, 40% increase in product C, and doubling the sales of product D. With those changes, could you calculate the total profit? Absolutely. So just to summarize, so we're cutting the least profitable um, products, which are products B and E, they'll be eliminated. And yes. because of this, because of this, consumers will move towards A, B, and D, and product mm -hmm. A sales will rise 50%, product yeah. B sales will rise 40%, and mm -hmm. product D sales will rise 100%. Uh, and so they, yes, they doubled. Great. Yes, yeah, doubled. Uh, and so yeah. just to clarify, is this with the new prices or with the prices in the yes. first month? So that would, that would be going back to our original. So the, the new one is one of the options, but you just calculated the, for the, the total net profits of 44 million. That was something we just calculated as one of the options. Mm -hmm. So the pricing oh. strategy, this would be another option of cutting the least product, least profitable. So you're going back to the original prices of the dollar. Okay, absolutely. So we have a dollar. Um, and so mm -hmm. our goal is to increase. First, I'm going to calculate how much more volume of yeah. B and D I sold. So I already have that calculation from the previous. Mm -hmm. So A is started with 8 million. So at 50%. That's 12 million units sold of A. And mm -hmm. B was 25 million units, an increase of 40%. I'm divided by 10 times four. And so that's another 10 million units. So that's 30, mm -hmm. 35 million units of B. And for... Yeah, uh, here, I just put up the original um, diagram for you. So the original unit sales for product A were 40,000. Oh. I believe. Yeah. It was so now it would go from there okay mm -hmm. okay oh okay let me just check my math again oh i see i see so we have yeah. originally 8 million and so that's going to increase to okay the 12 million mm -hmm. originally for b originally what we sold for b was mm -hmm. 25 million mm -hmm. wait no 200 oh wait no 25 million and so mm -hmm. a 40 percent increase in b will be add another 10 million, so 35 million units of B will be sold. And- Yeah, but remember we're, um, we're taking out, we're eliminating B and E because of the <laughs> least possible. Oh, excuse me, oh, I, I, wrote, I wrote C instead of, I wrote B, okay, excuse me. So B is eliminated, correct. The a 40% increase in C, excuse me. So we sold, for C, we had sold, um, we had sold originally, so I want to calculate again, 6 million, 6 million net profit for C, divide by the 0.4 profits per unit. So again, I'm gonna divide by 10 times four. So that's 2.4 million of, mm -hmm. yes, nope, nope. Divide by 10, six times four is, yep, 2.4 million units of C sold. And so I'm now going to, the 40% increase. So I'm gonna, again, divide by, divide by, divide by 10 times four, so that's 240 times four is going to be times four is going to be six, 96, nine, nine, yes, nine, 96, 960,000 extra units sold. And so I'm going to round that to 1 million just to make the math easier and to make it 30, 30, 3.4 million of C sold. And finally, for Finally, for product D, because E was eliminated, I'm going to, I already calculated that to be 6.4 million units currently sold. And so I'm going to, hold on. D is 8 million divided by, D is 8 million divided by 10 times eight. Okay, yes, so that is 6.4 million originally. So I'm gonna double that to be, 12.8 million units of D. Mm -hmm. Wait, so I have 12 million units of A sold after products E and B have eliminated. I have 3.4 million of products C sold after, after E and B are eliminated. And I now have 12.8 million uh, units sold of D. 
And so calculating with the original price, I'm going to first calculate the revenue. Well, I can, I, I already know that I already know the profit per unit. That's right. So I can now calculate, I can multiply the profit per unit for A, C, and D. And so for A, it would be 0 0.2. For C, it'll be 0 0.4. And for D, it'll be 0 0.8. So I'm now going to multiply them. So 0 0.2 of A divide by divide by divide by 10 times two. So that's 2.4 million in profit. I'm going to take product C, 3.4 C times 0.4. So again, I'm going to divide by 10 times four. So that's going to be six, one, 13, 3.4. I'm going to, I'm going to round that to 3.5 just to make the math a little bit easier. So I'm going to divide by 10 times four. So it's five, seven, 14 million. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Yes. The net profit. We have the, we have the, we have the profit per year. We have, we have volume, we have volume sold. We currently have the volume number sold. And now we have profit per unit. So I need to multiply them. I need to multiply them. So 12 million times 0.2 profit. Okay, yes, yes. I, I just want to check my math. We have 2.4 million of A and we have 0.4 profit per unit of C. And so multiplying 3.5 million with 0.4, that's we're going to get from that. And divide by 14 million, 1.4 million, 1.4 million, that's where it is. 1.4 million dollars for C. And for product D, we're going to have, um, I'm just gonna round that to 13 million for ease of calculation. 1.3 times eight is going to be 3.4 million. So that adds up to only about, about $8 million. So I'm just gonna check my math. It looks like we lost a lot of profit and that doesn't make any, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I'm gonna go back and check my math. Okay. We have 50% increase in A sold. And we had calculated that we sold, we sold 30 million units of A. We made profit of 8 million, but we sold 30 million units of A. I see. So. Okay, so I, I I used the wrong numbers. So 30 million of A, 30 million of A. Where are you getting the 30 million of A? So originally we had sold $8 million in net profits. And um, because we sold profit per unit is 20 cents, that means if I divide, mm -hmm. if I divide, divide 8 million by point to it, that's 40 million. That's 40 million of A, 40 million of A. Mm -hmm. And for product B is eliminated, product C is going to be 6 million divided by 0.4. That'll be 20. I'm, I'm going to round product C to 20, 25 million. Just be, so 6 million divided by 0.4, divide by 0.4. So we're going to divide by 6 divided by 0.4. 6 divided by 0.4. Fifteen million. 15 million of product C sold. And for product D, it'll be 8 million divided by 0.8. So that'll be 80, 80 million divided by 15, 80 million divided by. So I, I'm, I'm 80 million, uh, 8 million, excuse me, 8 million divided by 0.8. So that's 80 million divided by 10 over 8. So that's going to be 80 divided by 8, which equals 10 million. So we sold 40 million of A, 15 million of C, and 10 million of D originally. And so yeah. we're going to increase A by 50% so that now we have 60 million A. Uh, increase C by 40%, so it's 1.5 1.5 times 4, so that's 6 million of B. And oh, 6 million plus 15, so that will be 21 million A, uh, 21 million C, excuse me. And for 10 million, we have 100 cents degrees, so that's 20 million of D. Yeah. So now we have 60 million of A times what we know is 20 cents, 20 cents profit per volume sold. And so that is going to be divided by five is 15, divided by five is 15 million. No, it will be, be 12 million, it'll be 12 million. 
That's right. It'll be 12. Hold on. Divide it by 10. 600 divided by 30 million. Hold on one second. 60 times. Maybe 12 million. Excuse me. 12 million dollars of 12 million dollar profit from A. From C, it'll be 20, 21 million times 0 0.4 of um, profit per unit. So that'll be divide by divide by 10 times four. That's going to be 80, 8.4 million. And for item D, we have we have sold 10 million of D times. Um, uh, times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 of D, and so now we have eight million, eight million, eight million dollars of profit. So twelve plus eight point four plus eight. So now we have twenty eight point four million dollars of profit. Mm -hmm. Twenty eight point four million dollars of profit. Mm -hmm. Right. Let me just show you the answer there. So the profit is actually 36.4. Um, and I think that's, I'm not sure where the math was, the issue, but you just, you could take a look at that. Oh, there. I see. I used the 10 million, 10 million of D, but instead it was 20 million. So that is 16, mm -hmm. I see. Okay. So I, I used the original, I mm -hmm. used the original volume D instead of the new volume of D. So there we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 16, yeah. Uh, 36.4, yeah, 36.4. Okay. Let me stop sharing. Yeah. Um, so now, do you think you have enough information now to make a recommendation for a client as to which strategy out of these two? Um, one was the one where we eliminate the least profitable products, and the other one was where we adjust the pricing of what you think the client should move forward with. Yes. So in the case of increasing the overall profitability for our client, which is a chain of dollar stores, after mm -hmm. performing a series of calculations regarding changes in pricing schemes and changing in reducing product lines, mm -hmm. we recommend that increasing the price of product A, B, and E by 50 cents, as well as lowering the lowering the price of product D to 50%, that the corresponding sales of those products will result in a $44.9 million uh, net profit, uh, as which is greater than our other calculations for um, our for our changing in pricing and changing products. So we recommend raising those prices of A, B, and E by 50 cents and lowering D to 50 cents per unit. Uh, some risks to our assumptions would be that um, if Our risk, some risk to our assumption, some risk to this change in our um, pricing would be if the if the market instability would mean that um, the supply chains for A B, uh, if the supply chain for these products, the supply chain for the products were to be disrupted due to the recession. But a core assumption that we would have is that there are not new products that we can enter into our to our our stores that would increase the revenue. And so what I would like to propose as next steps would be to determine whether or not these products will maintain their growth in sales for the long term or if um, these changes in price would be reflecting in greater net profits over um, the next several years. Okay. How do you feel? <laughs> oh, you're, like you're able to catch information really fast. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that the everything was in point. But there was no like hundredth. There's no hundredth. Yeah, yeah. Let me there's go over this again with you. Oh. So, like, about the I noticed is there's this exhibit down here. So maybe if I was supposed to show you this, and then from this, you're supposed to make those changes based on the, like instead of the table. So then 
I that's where I messed up. But uh, then over here, like for the recommendation, basically the points you hit. So they said that, you know, the best strategy would be the cost based pricing, um, just because then like it'll be lowering the prices of the cheapest products. It's going to raise profits and then identify like the, ma the major constraint of the profits is the cost. So you're making that change. Yeah. And then the risk again was that the core assumption here is that um, even though we're making changes to those products, customers are still going to buy them. Right. So we're making assuming that custom, like a number up here, it was like, oh, customers, like this is how the prices will increase. So, oh, it's going to fall by this much. And then D will increase by this much. That's oh, yeah, those are assumptions. Yeah. Right. So then uh, yeah. uh, we're assuming the customers are going to buy by that. Right. Yeah. And then with the second one, the assumption there is that we're saying that, oh, uh, profits will increase by this much, but maybe we could try a combination, eliminating a product and changing prices to some extent. Oh, so yeah. that's a good consideration, right? And then, oh, for next steps, another thing that's cool is that maybe we can try rolling this out at some of the locations. Like we don't know how many there are, right? And yeah. see how people are reacting. And then we can also consider if they need like rebranding. So marketing point of view, because right now it's like, oh, everything's a dollar, but now they're going to change it. So they need to rebrand it and make sure customers align with that. Absolutely. Yeah, but like otherwise, I feel like you caught onto the numbers really well, and like you know, you you ex like the whole time we were doing your math, it's like you take the person on that journey, so it's so easy to follow. Like, oh, this is what he's working on, so that's really good, and it, like it's so clear that you've watched the modules because you yeah. follow that order. So like you know, it's only up from here. Okay. <laughs> good. Good. Okay. Okay. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. That was that was tough. Yeah, that was tough. I I could you scroll down to the to the conclusion? Just just because. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So these these are the recommendations. Ugh. Yeah, because I, I feel like I got the math well, and I, mm -hmm. I, I at least got that, okay, the, the, the pricing is better, but the pricing for the, the pricing changes is the better strategy, but beyond like the next steps of like, like, you know, what, we, what can we do with that information beyond just like, oh, we should go with that. Like we said about trying new, some stores first or like doing a combination of both. Yeah. One thing with you is you, you can ask for a pause, right? Like before the recommendation, like you you just take your time to like think it through. Whereas you, you want to like, oh yes, I'm ready. Let's give an answer. But like, if you paused, I think you would have thought about that more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should have paused. That's right. That's right. I, I yeah, I could have been like, oh, uh, could I, Take a second to gather my thoughts on what these, what this information. Yeah, before the recommendation, right? Before the recommendation, yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, like the, the case is number. It's case number one. Okay. Um, is it supposed to be hard, or is this a pretty straightforward yeah, one? Yeah, this it's a straightforward one. Profitability. So it's a okay. good case to practice math. Like obviously you have to do a lot of math, um, but it's like a simple profitability, right? Because we're only looking at what's the change in profits, right? Yeah. Um, and then uh, it's, it's the Queens, um, uh, let me see. Also, it's the Queens, yeah. um, uh, case page 67. Uh, I can like, like send you the, let's take a screenshot of this. So then if you want to go over this again, is it in the spreadsheet? Yeah, it was, it's from the spreadsheet. Let me show it to you there. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording as well. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. 